Hey everyone, thanks for tuning into another Coffee with Kittle. Today I have the Digital Samaritan himself with us. And if you don't know who that is, it's linked down in the description. And what I want to know first, we're going to get into some amazing tools to help you with your workflows, um, some AI stuff, some prompting stuff that I know is coming that's going to be exciting. But before that, can you explain to me and everyone else why your username why your tag is called the digital samaritan of course you know introduce yourself what you do and then we'll kind of dive into the other stuff Andrew, thanks for so much thanks so much for having me on the show a pleasure to be here and have this conversation today i think it's gonna be fantastic oh uh, yeah so the question uh, about the username well i mean when i first started like Never creating content was never the plan, to be honest. It was like a way for me to get out of my, out of my comfort zone because I used to hate social media. So, mm. you know, COVID, everybody was bored. So I was like, okay, I need to get out of my comfort zone. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do 30 videos on TikTok for 30 days. And that's how it all started. When I first started, I was just like doing whatever every day because the goal was to just push 30 videos. Um, and then after that, it kind of became a habit. So I just kind of kept doing it over and over again, you know, just really just kind of fun doing those quick little videos on TikTok. Um, and then eventually yeah. one of my videos, which was about Microsoft Clarity, uh, got 10K views. Okay. Um, and then I was like super excited. I was like, holy shit, I'm like popular now. Like, you know, I'm just one part <laughs> of 10K views. Um, and then I was always been obsessed with products and what people are building, what they're building. And being a generalist, I just like finding hacks and tools to bridge the scale gap or bridge the time gap. Uh, so I started sharing more of the tools that I had my in my repository in my bookmarks, and uh, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm like helping people, and like you know, there's like a good Samaritan where you say like if somebody's helping someone without yeah. any expectation in return. So I was like, I'm helping people digitally, so I guess I'm a digital Samaritan. So that's how it came <laughs> out to be. Um, yeah, and I just kind of stuck with it. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I mean, the ability to not always, I guess, kind of push one specific thing, but have this library. I think that that's what's so one that can be really hard, maybe for you as as a content creator and for other people to accumulate, right? Because it it, it does require a certain amount of research to say these tools are good for this. These uh, resources are efficient for my workflow for my organization. I mean, you have everything. I mean, probably close to everything in terms of all those bookmarks and tabs laid out um, on your site. And it took a lot of work, I'm sure, for you to dive in and figure out what are all these resources. And then not only that, because you could just have a page full of resources, but then to categorize them. And so that's what I think is so effective and maybe where most of our conversation can can gear towards today, which is the most efficient tools in categories that would be relatable, at least to our audience of designers, print on demand, uh, marketers, entrepreneurs, um, maybe even people that are doing YouTube content creation, you said was was maybe challenging, difficult for you at first doing social yeah. content, building an audience. So maybe if we can just start, and I want you to lay out like your top um, either resources or tools that people can start to go bookmark themselves, maybe try. Um, yeah, I'll just give you free reign to kind of talk through what your thoughts are on the most efficient tools. I mean, there's tons. I mean, it really depends on what you want to do uh, and in your where you're at, what your profession is, what kind of work you're in. Um, I like to say, or like I like to kind of consider myself as like a Shazam for tools per se. Like if somebody tells me like, oh, I kind of want to for this, I feel like I want to be able to like get to something like within 30 seconds. Um, mm. personally, just like a personal, personal kind of mission in a way. Um, but yeah, to kind of like give an overall, like just something that might appeal to broader audience, um, tools like Zapier, I feel like super underrated. A lot of people okay. feel intimidated because like, oh, it's automation. It might be too technical or, you know, if they don't have the technical aptitude or a background, but I think like, just kind of like, if you forget about that part and just trying to build one simple automation. It's literally a slippery slope and to then start thinking how you can basically take a task, break it down and then start automating it. Um, mm. So I think like, okay. I mean, Zapier is one, you know, that's more popular. There are a lot of other alternatives as well, uh, you know, for different price ranges and different way on how like the canvas looks and works just for different user interfaces and stuff. 
But tools like Zapier, I feel like it's super underrated for almost everyone like who works on a computer should start leveraging it. Um, the other one that comes to mind right away um, is going to be Claude. I mean, a lot of people are familiar with ChatGPT, but like Claude with as recent you know, advances with artifacts is actually super powerful. Um, okay. I did a YouTube video on this recently, like how you can, you know, if you're a student, upload your notes, turn it into quizzes automatically into my apps automatically okay, okay. um you can generate like you know interactive reports from a data chart or like a presentation all done in seconds so i think like it's it's super powerful again just for beginners as, as well here as well if you just trying to like you know visualize um you know for learning just for like coming up with new ideas or interactivity uh just kind of like more engaging stuff uh, so you can, you know, you start using Claude a little bit more uh, because it can do a lot more stuff that ChatGPT, at least to this day, cannot do uh, on the free time. Right. And with Zapier, which I think is is maybe, even though many people aren't using it, I, I've, I mean, I've heard that name a lot. Um, can you, and I, you mentioned it about people kind of being fearful, maybe it being too advanced. Can you give us like, maybe walk us through an example where Zapier could be the most effective. Like you're saying, anyone that uses a computer or really anyone in any kind of niche um, would be able to utilize a tool like that. Could you give us like where it would make someone's workflow most effective? Sure. Um, let's start. I mean, you know, we're in the AI age now, so let's talk about yep. one of like their new yeah, things you can do with it. So you can just build quick little assistant bots. For example, everybody likes to have a personal assistant, you know, like anybody who's an entrepreneur, they think about like, maybe I'm going to have an assistant one day that's going to do so much work mm. for me. Um, so yeah. you can just basically like you can connect your mailbox and you can just do a quick prompt. Like, Hey, you're going to be my AS email assistant. I'm just going to ask the questions. You're going to give me the answers. That way you can just like ask it like, hey, what are the top three emails I should be answering today? And it's just going to mm -hmm. go through and Bob's just going to tell me like, okay, these are the top three emails. It's going to look at, you know, like the deadlines for anything coming up, like you know, the urgency of things. I mean, of course, it's mm -hmm. a basic prompt. You can like, you know, massage it. You can give examples of what's important and what's not. But that's like one of the simplest things anyone can do that's going to have an immediate impact on the workflow okay. and the productivity. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So it is trying to take uh it, it's it's more of time efficiency in that regard so more yeah, virtual yeah. assistant kind of um it, maybe i mean i'm assuming it can also do that for other things i guess the email was one example yeah. but it could also be integrated and or do things maybe task lists or if you're using something like maybe like a monday.com or something like that um maybe it can go in and also show you hey this is coming up uh, do this immediately. Um, with the other one that you mentioned, the one that you said is kind of turning it into visualiz visualizations. You say it was called Claude Love or it. Cloud. Yeah. Okay. okay. What? Um, where is the where is the limitation there? Is it is it? Do you have to interact with it a certain way? Um, you said something about uploading a chart, uploading a PDF. Like, is is there a limitation there, or could you give it like, let's say you gave it a spreadsheet? I'm just trying to relate this to some of our audience. So let's say they're in prime demand. They've been doing a lot of research. Um, they've got a spreadsheet of like these topics and these like t-shirts ideas. You, you're saying you could give it that and then it will kind of mind map or mind node it out into specific categories and things like that. Is that like a, a fair example? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Um, so yeah, you can do that. You can, let's say you have data for like, you know, different products and whatnot. Uh, instead okay. of you going through Google Sheets and like, you know, Excel sheet and trying to do all that, you know, data visualization yourself, you can just like say like, hey, you know, here's the thing. Can you make me an interactive chart, bar chart, pie chart, whatever you want? Mm, so okay. You can start look at that data right away. Um, okay. So, like those so if you had. Out. Okay. Yeah. So, so, okay. All right. So if you had, uh, for example, uh, you know, a, a pretty hefty sales report on products you could give it to that and you could say visualize this for me in t-shirts to mugs to whatever in a pie chart bar graph whatever it'll do that yeah yeah okay gotcha yeah that sounds that sounds very helpful i would say because at least the people that i know are going to be serious about having a digital shop or having something like a print on demand or even uh doing something their own like like 
something like a streetwear or apparel brand that they're going to do from scratch. All of that entails research and all of that entails lists. All of that entails reports, pricing. You're going to do competitor analysis and being able to like shoot that into something visual sounds amazing, especially as someone that is a designer that would rather look at something visual than just tons of columns and being like, I don't know what I'm supposed to even do. Totally. That sounds super effective, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure anyone who's a designer, they're more visual anyway, because that's why they're right. in the space. Yeah, exactly. Now, if we talk about um, the designer, maybe even the artist that is trying to improve their workflow, obviously, the, the first two tools that you mentioned would be great. If we stay in that kind of more creative category, what are some other resources and or tools that you would suggest um, you know, even if they're, even if they're paid or, or if they're free, um, that someone at least look into to say, this could actually help your creative process. Oh, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> so creative process is where the, you know, it gets trickier. Um, cause a lot of people, I, I do feel like, you know, there's like a bit of, there's two sides to the story here. Like some people who feel like they're being empowered by the creative process versus other okay. people who think, you know. Uh, well, maybe it's going to take things away from me because, you know, we don't have jobs because it's all being automated. With that being said, I was talking recently to like a video editor of Incidentally, Zapier, uh, their team, and I was asking them how they were doing their creative work using all these AI tools recently. Okay. And what they mentioned, I mean, I'll, I'll say what they mentioned also, and I'll talk about like my perspective as well. Um, yeah. They said they're kind of like using this as getting all their first drafts done super quickly. So let's say they have a video idea, you know, they have a new concept or something. So they're leveraging tools for AI video creation and AI image creation to quickly storyboard the ideas and getting the feedback from the team. Uh, so that was like the perspective that's kind of fresh in my mind because I just had a conversation uh, like a few weeks ago. Uh, from my perspective, I mean, it's very similar. I think like the way I think about AI and all these tools, um, it's like they're like your intern. So you can like quickly yeah. get the feedback. You can like, you know, get the feedback. You can ask them to re revise the feedback. Like there's no ego here. Like, you know, if you're working with a team, you kind of feel like you kind of give the feedback, they go back and then they come back with a revision seven days later. Then you kind of feel like you don't want to like give too harsh of feedback because they work so much and it's going to crush your ego. So I think from that perspective, like all these brainstorming tools, uh, that being chat, GPT, Claude and all that stuff. I feel like those are probably the best ways to start thinking about ideas and what's even possible. Uh, and mm -hmm. then use that as a way to then kickstart like your own creativity and like, you know, start bridging and connecting the dots and bring those ideas to life. I know you like your question was about like, you know, exact tooling per se uh, sure, for like sure. creative work. Um, so to get back to that part, I feel like, you know, any AI image generation tool, AI music generation tool and AI video generation tool, like all these gen AI tools are probably going to feel a lot of creativity, uh, especially people, you know, in the space, um, in, in the design space, because, you know, they're either designing for, for t-shirts, for other merchandise products or designing videos, they're creating videos or like they're, you know, adding music onto the videos. I feel like that kind of like really encompasses the big creative part. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You bring up a good point. We actually just had a, uh, a conversation. I'm going to, I'm going to assume it's the previous coffee with Kittle right before this one, where we actually talked about the whole is AI taking over artists, jobs, designers, jobs. And I mean, I love what you mentioned about it being an intern. We call it at Kittle, we call it the co-pilot, um, mm -hmm. which is extremely, I mean, I was just using it today. I'm, a, I'm also assuming by the time this video out, all this is already launched. So I'm hopefully I'm not going to get in trouble for this, but the ability to essentially just have that co-pilot right there, pop it up, have it ideate, have it change, have it change color, have it help you generate text. I didn't even know that was a capability until I played with it today. And I was like, oh, Kittle can now actually just give you filler paragraph where it can give you ideas to change the text in this t-shirt design. And so... I agree in that it's either the intern that you can give tasks to, but it can also be um, the assistant, the co-pilot designer, if we're talking about something like a Kittle yeah. or like you said, a, a, a mid journey or something else in that it's saying like, okay, you have this project. Here's where I can come in as the virtual assistant and give you X, Y, or Z. And so I'm not sure I totally subscribe to the it's 
it's it's taking over our artists and designers jobs two reasons one if we're talking about handcrafted art i think people that are looking for handcrafted are going to go to places where they can find it like an oil painting that you can feel yeah. right ai will never generate the oils the acrylic that i would want painted on a canvas design specific wise it just helps you be faster and i'm not sure it's any different than downloading a template from Envato or shutterstock um it, it's kind of the same thing it's just instead of downloading a pack of 50 elements i'm just asking the ai to generate one i mean i would love to get your thoughts on this topic i mean i, I know you already talked about it i'm just wondering what kind of feedback what kind of pushback is someone like yourself that does spend a lot of time it, and unless I'm misunderstanding in the AI space, it would be, it, I think it would be helpful to get your perspective on this. I think the feedback or the, the pushback usually comes from people, uh, you know, who are struggling to kind of get work. I mean, it does create a bit of, because, oh, okay. uh, you know, when you're trying to break in, like, you know, all the roles that were given to somebody who's bringing into the industry are not being automated in a way. So you kind of like only need experts and then, Previously, the way you would become expert is you kind of work with someone senior, you do all the grunt work and you kind of learn from the experience and you grow. But I think a lot of that is going to shift into like, you know, actually being more proactive and like getting the reps done yourself without that, you know, feedback from that human. Mm. But that's when like those folks can leverage AI to get the feedback. And then, you know, you kind of like bring up the experience from that perspective. But like all that being said, you know, I think super interesting things are going to happen. I could see it happen. Uh, I don't think they're tools right now. It's like, you know, let's say you have a t-shirt store. You have like five different designs. Um, like you can have an AI co-pilot that could literally look at the sales data of all the different designs. You can you look at like what kind of designs are working, what's not working. And then based on that, you can have your own personal system for recommendation. That's going to tell mm. you like, okay, what kind of designs you should be focusing on. Like, you know, if you find patterns between the colors, you can find patterns between the themes. Um, so I feel like that's when things get really powerful as well. We can start like leveraging the data and like the human behavior and then letting AI do all its magic without you being a data scientist or a data nerd to kind of get those decisions. Yeah. Yeah, that, it's it's interesting because that's that that would be suggesting <laughs> that, okay, so now... AI is going to take the jobs of <laughs> data scientists <laughs> and the big one is like copywriters, right? Like that's, and let, let me, I want to know what you think about this. Our thought, our play was, um, you have these amazing tools like chat GPT or otherwise that can give you full on blog articles. I mean, they need to be edited, right? Or landing page right. content or email content or whatever. They, they need to be edited. But I think, I wonder if the fear is misplaced in that, are we afraid that it's going to take all of the agencies, you know, copywriters and SEO writers and blog writers, or can we say, huh, I'm going to have all of my writers train ChatGPT so that we can get more clients. For some reason, that's where my mind goes to is not, well, let's lay off five copywriters because ChatGPT can now take their place. Probably, probably can. But I'm not sure that's the stronger solution. The stronger solution might be, let's have all the writers figure out how to use it so that we can like in triple the amount of work we can do. I mean, what do you think? about that i think you get it uh, right on the right on there uh like so anybody who's like let's say copywriting for example uh you know yep. like everybody starts a career as a copywriting but their end goal is to become an editor right for the most part everybody wants to be hmm. the editor they want to be the boss make okay. their own decisions yeah and now okay. you're letting ai be the copywriter and you become the editor like it gets, mm, okay. it basically gets the first draft done. You prompt it like, okay, like, I don't like this, but I like this. Can we tweak using this? You're the editor. So we're kind of like fast tracking our way to where we want to go in the first place. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and that's, it, it's so rare. I, I mean, I don't think I've ever used something like chat GPT to give me something that's right on the first try. Just nowhere yeah. close. I mean, after you train and train and train, uh, it can get closer and closer. And so I guess I'm also wondering about that 
with with your experience about how long would you say it takes to kind of get comfortable using these different tools because i think where someone could enter in and just kind of get frustrated because it spits something out they try it and it it, it just didn't work because you gave them one thing and it gave you one thing that it just thinks and then you said okay great now i'll try this or i'll post this or i'll publish this um and i have a follow-up question to this that i'm going to write down to make sure i don't forget it because i already forgot it once but let me know what you think about that while i write this question down no uh no i agree i've noticed that quite a lot as well where we try to do something i mean thanks to our short attention spans um mm. we get frustrated too quickly and then we move on and just make judgment that this isn't good enough um mm. but i would say i mean even just chat gpt for a single task if you're trying to do like spend an hour it's it's not mm. much okay. like you know the amount of learnings you're going to get done just like playing around with that any tool for that matter is going to be immense i'm sure you've seen that with kettle as well like you know people are trying to use oh, yeah. kettle's ai image generator for all their design work if you just kind of like do a quick little five minute test, you're not going to get there. But if you talk to somebody who has no. actually like designed and like things using, yeah, that you can't even differentiate, they probably have spent time, like, you know, just going back and forth with, the, with the technology yeah. to really refine the prompt, understand the quirks of it, how it works. And then the creativity comes from like having that image, like the, that imagination that what you need to do and translating that into words of, you know, what it, gonna sound like and then getting it done again by the ai mm. so you just save the time from doing it yourself and just getting those quick iterations yeah exactly i would say that that's 100 percent right the in, in, in a way it's putting in the reps to <laughs> to to get something to be right it it's it's just so rare that you go at anything uh and 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 you put it in in the, in the first time it's right i mean it's possible i'm not suggesting it's not but it's rare. Um, and, and that's kind of some of, some of that's on us, you know, if, in terms of like at Kittle, we are trying to do our best to train the generator to give you something with uh, something close with as little prompt as possible. Cause we know people are beginning at this, but at the same time, that's why we include stuff like the reference part where it's like, okay, mm -hmm. we know you're struggling with how to explain something. So let's just give you a tool within the AI that allows you to upload your own reference. That's just an example. Right. But one, one thing that I'm really curious, and you you don't have to like, you don't have to posit this yourself in terms of just creative, but the, the example I'm going to paint for you is more design artistic in nature. So I think one thing that a lot of people are seeing and are afraid of and or making the anti art push, the anti AI art push is that we see, and a lot of people see a complete oversaturation with the same kind of looking stuff or just really bad stuff. So uh, I like the way that my friend Rich puts it at Hustle Ninjas. He says, it's not oversaturated, it's oversaturated with bad stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And so the kind of question is like, how, how do you, how will you kind of handle this over oversaturization of kind of bad AI usage, like whether that's something like just tons of listings of t-shirt designs or digital products or whatever, with just really poorly slapped on AIR, or it's like people uploading eBooks and KDP books of just full on chat GPT <laughs> written novels that are just crap. Like, I don't know, maybe the, maybe the question's a little silly, but I don't know. Handle is not the right word. Maybe, I guess, what do you think about it? That's, that's one way to say, what do you think about it? And two, maybe it's the more practical thing is like, what can we do to ensure that like what we're doing is not crap? <laughs> oh, I love this question. Um, I've talked about this many times. Uh, I think the answer to that is creativity. Um, so the way I think about it is that like before there was like a big scale, like, you know, you could be a beginner, okay. like with no skills and you wouldn't be able to do anything. If you're like average, you like, you know, do that crappy stuff. But if you're great, then your work is of course distinguished. But with like AI, we have all these people who were like, you know, average or below average are now being raised to average. So like you mm. said, like with writing a novel, like again, if you have an idea, you can write a novel. 
uh, if you have idea, you can like put those crappy designs on those t-shirts and then you're flooding with like the average size stuff. Over yeah, there. exactly. Which just means that if you're creative enough, like you just have to kind of like, you know, be creative more than everybody else and just be up there. Uh, so you're still distinguished. It's like, you know, when everybody's zigging, you're going to zag. Uh, like we've seen it, you know, examples of when, you know, something's going one way. Well, I heard this in a podcast recently, like, you know, there's always like an anti-movement. So when Facebook came in, Facebook got popular, uh, Snapchat was like, okay, people don't like photos to be shared permanently. We're going to do 24 hours or like, you know, mm-hmm. instant sort of thing. Uh, so they were able to break through all that social media noise with their own perception of like, you know, the product that was Snapchat. We still use it. It's so popular. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of where my mind goes is like when everything is getting so oversaturated with the mediocrity. Uh, we just have to find a way to push the envelope and like just be more creative. So the creativity, that's why I feel like creativity is not going to die because that's what you need to stay relevant. Mm-hmm. Right. You still have to give the idea. You still have to craft it in whatever tool, whatever resource that you're using. And I think that's maybe where the danger and the issue comes from is looking at the tool, looking at the prompter, looking at the thing as the end all be all without bringing back in that, that, that human touch, that hand, hand feel, right? You give it, you give it what you want. It gives you the story. It gives you the art. It gives you the idea. It gives you whatever, but then you take it and finish it basically, uh, and, and make it better. That's kind of what I'm hearing you say. I think that that may be where the danger is. It's just like, oh yeah, no, I can do all the things now because I have the tools that are the end all be all. But really, I think they're just tools. They're just resources, you know? They're just the tools. Uh, you still need to know where to, uh, like, you know, let's say it's a hammer, right? So you still need to know where to where to put the nail in. Uh, and that's where, like, you know, the skill comes in. Yeah. I think it's also a really cool and hopefully motivating factor to to, to think about the the bar of entry right with ai and the the ai tools the ai art generators uh the bar of entry now brings a lot of people to uh to a kind of even playing field and so then your point is saying like okay well then we have to be distinguished we have to be better so in a way i think from from my perspective things are it's going to be really obvious what's what's made with ai to me and it's going to be really obvious what's better than that. I think those are the two things that we're we're going to see. I think it's going to instigate better results, not because the AI is going to give you the better result, but it's going to force you to to make it better, essentially. Yes. Or it's going to yes. at least at least it's going to force those that are more creative in nature, whether that's writing, um, selling, whatever. It, it's gonna it's gonna increase it. So that's that's kind of where I see it going. I'm wondering just for you, what, what would, I want to know what are your go-to places to educate yourself so that people can go to understand how they should be using these tools. I mean, I know there's, there's YouTube, for example, that I'm sure has just got so much resource, but you know, and then we have accounts such as yourself that that's going to give you these kind of tips, these, these quick resources you can go do, but maybe just talk through like how you kind of grew in this knowledge of using these tools most effectively. For sure. So, so when I was in in my consulting career, uh, so 2018, 2019, uh, I wanted to transition to the product management career. uh, And then always wanted to build like startups, like, you know, when university I did like, you know, computer electronics engineering. So I was obsessed with like building hardware projects. Uh, mm-hmm. And then kind of like, you know, then I realized those are so hard, you need capital and whatnot. So transition to the software side of things. Um, so back then, you know, I was going into Y Combinator's show page where like everybody just sort of mentions what they're building. Then there's forums like Product Hunt when people are launching the new softwares they're building. So that's, those, those were like the initial resources that always caught my attention. And I was just like every morning while having breakfast, I would just like kind of go onto those websites look at what's trending, what's going on, what's pe- what people build today. And then whatever would get my interest, I would just go try it on myself. Mm, um, and then okay. like, that's how I was kind of like able to build these repositories. I was like, okay, cool, this is useful. I'll save it. Because uh, like 2019, 2020, my brother and I, we trying to do like an e-commerce store, drop shipping, it failed. Um, <laughs> but like I've always 
been like in the space, like, you know, we launched our first startup product, and like, you know, software product in 2020 that failed as well. But like being able to get things done quickly is just what I like. Like I kind of like obsessed with that productivity and efficiency, maybe a little too much. Uh, Cause even when we go to like grocery shopping, I'm like, okay, we got to go to this aisle and this aisle and stuff. All this exactly. optimizing. Um, I think that's where like it all comes from. And I'm always just testing it out for passion and then just saving it, whatever I think it's going to be useful. Uh, so whenever mm-hmm. I'm trying to do a task, I can just like, okay, this is a longer way if I want to do it manually, but maybe I can like just use this tool and then I'll be able to uh, do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically just building a catalog, so to speak. Basically. Uh, to, yeah. To, to, to recall and say like, oh, okay, yeah, I know this, this can help here. Yeah. No, that's, that's really good. I think that in one sense, people may feel like that's going to take kind of a while to do, but I think that's kind of the point is that the, the, the heavy lifting you do in the beginning of using something, whether it's like a, you know, a product hunt or something like that, where you're going to be able to see a lot of different things being created. You're going to be able to test them most likely quickly and for free, at least for a time to see if you want to use that, you log it away, you save it and you say, okay, great. Now this is going to be uh, something I use for this. Now, maybe the, the, the last thing we can kind of turn to that one, I know a lot of people struggle with Two, I think you have an amazing tool for this is being able to prompt effectively. Uh, I struggle with this. Many of our users for Kittle struggle with this for art, for, for mm-hmm. AI art and prompting and things like that. But even when it comes to just using something like a chat GPT, where everyone has access to that up until the point where you would pay for the next tier, they still struggle with the prompting. And so then they're going and they're watching YouTube videos on how to prompt better, many of which we have for art and stuff like that. But I think you have a solution that you're building out to to help craft and nurture people's prompts to be better. And so I'd like you to talk a little bit about that and all that's coming uh, to get people excited for this this tool that you have. Sure. Um, it's called Prompt Genie. So like the story here is that, you know, 2023, like early when, you know, ChatGPT was just like, everybody was going gaga about it. Like on Twitter, we just noticed that there would be like, my entire feed was like, okay, you know, comment, you know, must be following, comment this and like, you know, retweet and I'll send you my hundred prompts for this. Yes, exactly. So we were like, okay, so what's going on here? Like, you know, it's just like, kind of like just prompting. It should be like talking to an intern. But we realized that like people are not using the chat GPT well just because like they're getting frustrated because not getting the results. And then the reason for that is it's just saying like, hey, you know, do me this. And chat GPT, like, you know, all these large language models are basically like, you know, a really good um, like auto responding thing. You need to auto complete. It's a really good auto complete, basically. It's mm. like it predicts the next best word. And that's how okay. you come up with the new ideas. So if your prompt is very generic, you're only going to get generic results. So you need like the prompt to be like super specific. You need to give context. You need to give like all those things, which takes time and practice to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. So that's when we were like, uh, it was just a weekend project. My brother and one of our friends was like, hey, can we turn this into a little tool that can just automate this work for people um, so they can actually use the tool more effectively? And we did. And then it turns out like within the first four days, we had first person who wanted to pay for this. I was like, oh, this is fantastic. Okay. Oh, wow. It kind of validates like that there's a need for it. And then ever since, like, you know, I've had people just use this a lot. We use it internally and it basically gets a job done. So right now, like, you know, the way, the best way to use this is a Chrome extension. So with ChatGPT, you're trying to write something. And if you're not sure if it's a good prompt, you can just click on it and it just tells you what kind of things you should be adding to your prompt. And okay. for another click, it's just going to add, kind of enrich your prompt better, make it more better. Uh, and then you can just get those chat to get the results. So it's kind of like a Grammarly uh, for, prompt, for, for prompting is that how we like to call it. Because um, mm-hmm. just like, you know, in English, you know, Grammarly, what it does is like, it tells you, okay, you're, you know, your grammar's wrong, maybe you can rewrite it this way. That's what we're trying to do. Just like, hey, maybe you can rewrite the prompt this way and see if we get better results. Yeah. And so I'm wondering when you were when you were developing that, and obviously you, you mentioned you saw a gap in uh, so many people saying like, 
here, I'll send you the way that I prompt or whatever, which obviously means people were looking for how to prompt better. Um, when it's going to suggest something to you, and obviously this is linked down below for people to go just check out themselves, but what what would you say is the most common, just to give people an idea, what's the most common thing that you think it's going to suggest that would be missing? Like I'm just wondering if there's the the kind of key component that people just aren't able to insert that would give chat GPT or what have you a better understanding. What, what kind of things is it maybe suggesting that you add? I think a lot of the people, they do not mention any constraints or what kind of output format they're looking for. Um, Interesting. A simple way I like to think about is like, let's say you're using any freelancing platform and you want to hire a freelancer for the job. You're not going to mm. talk to them. You're never going to see them. All you're going to do is send them project details. You're not going to send them project details, but like, hey, can you just write me, uh, like, you know, give me ideas for a t-shirt design or like just send me a t-shirt design for this. Your project brief is going to be detailed. It's like, okay, my business is this, you know, this is what I'm trying to do. Um, yeah. This is like, you know, what I don't want. This is the kind of style that I like. And I need these colors, maybe the ones that I like to, I like to do from a t-shirt design. And if you give all those details, that's when like the freelancer is going to do their job for you is actually going to do the stuff that you like. Whereas if we just mm -hmm. say like, I get me t-shirt design ideas, it's just going to be all over the place because you have given it no constraints. It can be like just running like a wild horse there. Um, hmm. So that's how we think about like, you know, all these large language models, tools like ChatGPT, where you need to act or think that the person or the AI you're talking to is just your freelancer. So give it the details you would do to your freelancer. Hmm. That's really good. That's really good. I mean, that's already even got me thinking about how I use it. <laughs> uh, and just saying like, I, I have definitely over the last several months, year or so been, been saying, putting at the end of my chat GPT prompts, don't give me <laughs> X, Y, and Z, or I'm right. not looking for X and Y. Like, or I'll even give an example like, hey, I'm about to give you an example of what I don't want you to say, you know what I mean? Or, or, yeah. or, or spit out. I think that's so good. I think that maybe that's a lot of what people are missing. And I think that can, I think that can translate to uh, AI art. I mean, I think in Kittle, you can say at the end of a prompt in Kittle, you can put no, no blue or no whatever. And I think we're even working on as far as I know a an anti keyword section where you can type in things that you don't want in the generation. So if you don't want it, the color red, or you don't want whatever, um, you can even do that. Now, this begs the question um, that I already know the answer to, but these people listening and watching don't is you said that it's it's working plugged in for for chat GPT. But there's lots of AI tools, including Kittle, uh, for Kittle AI, Kittle art. Um, when and are you going to be able to kind of extend that prompt genie to help you with these other tools like a Kittle, like, you know, what, what other kind of tool maybe works in your browser and, and suggest better prompting for the generations that you want. It's coming. Uh, it's under research and development right now, and we're hoping to, to a prompt genie version for images uh, mm. around November time is when we're hoping. Oh, for. wow. Yeah. yeah, that is super, super fast. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's amazing. Now, um, just for, for everyone that's, that's watching and listening that has either never heard of prompt genie and, and is curious, um, can you give us a quick rundown on what kind of trials there are? How much does it cost? What does it get you when you sign up? Um, if someone's curious to check it out. Yeah, right now uh, there's a 14 day free trial, um, but it does require credit card uh, to sign up. And then like after that, you, you can choose to stay. And if you like the tool, if not, no hard feelings whatsoever. Um, but yeah, so the pricing for the plan is like unlimited, generate as many prompts as you want, only $6.99. Um, so it's like, we want to just keep it affordable for like, you know, people across the world, because that's where our users are. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's pretty much what we have right now. Uh, it might change over the next few weeks or months or so, but, uh, if anybody's just coming from this video and you want a discount or you want a longer trial, just shoot our team, the support team you'll find on the website and email and we'll fix you up. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Well, you heard it there first. He said it, not me. Uh, if you want some kind of discount or something, they will hook you up. Um, well, this has been amazing. I want to leave the floor with you for this last little part to just either give any extra uh, bits of information, anything that's coming your way that sh that people should know about, like where to follow you, what, what do you have going on? Maybe if you're doing uh, courses or if you're you're doing communities or where people can just learn more from you. Um, I want to give you the floor to talk a little bit about that before we sign off. Sure. Uh, well, I mean, you know, all my tools, like everything that I test and I, I know it's like it's good and stuff, it's on my website, Digital Samaritan. So for anybody who doesn't want to do the research themselves and just want to like, mm. you can just search for what tool you're looking for. That's there. Or you can browse my feed on my Instagram. Um, so digital Samaritan Instagram or like for more longer tutorials and like, you know, more other content, there's YouTube, uh, there's no courses, all the content is free. Uh, there's a newsletter as well, right. where like sort of summarize how AI can be used to like, you know, and work for marketing uh, for the most part. Um, that's just the weekly, again, free newsletter. Uh, so all the content is free at the moment. Um, and I just, again, just want to help people, you know, save time, be more productive because I truly believe like. We sleep eight hours, our human body needs maintenance for six hours. And for the rest of the time, we're like working. So basically our entire adult life is working. So might as well do something we enjoy. Um, mm. That's kind of like what, what I personally believe in. And uh, that's what I hope uh, that people can also start feeling the same way. Because I don't want anybody to like start complaining about work. Like I don't like that. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I can't think of uh, a better way to end this discussion. That was very motivating and hopefully gets people hyped for that. So Everything mentioned is linked down in the description. I would definitely encourage you to check out all of his resources and Prompt Genie as well. I think it's amazing. I was checking it out earlier today. All of you watching and listening, if you haven't subscribed yet, whether you're on Spotify or you're on YouTube or Apple or whatever, please do me a quick favor. Subscribe. It's going to take you one second and drop a comment down below. We would love you to join the conversation if there was something we talked about that didn't make sense, something you want to dive in uh, and learn, that's more content for both of us actually to make to help you get better educated. And so please join the conversation. Drop a comment down below and we will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.